1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, say people, when I came to you, came not with excellently of speech. So, you know, there's no big words. Paul didn't be a walking dictionary. Or of wisdom. He didn't come with degrees and honors. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I don't want to hear about your sports. I don't want to hear about your grades. I don't want to hear what you did this weekend. I don't want to know what, what you're doing for a living. I want to know about Jesus Christ in your life. That's all I want to know. How's that? How's that for church talk? Paul says, I just want to know what you guys are doing for Jesus. The rest of it has no big deal to me. I don't care. And the crucified Jesus Christ. That one Jesus. <clears throat> and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Paul has been battered. He, he's been abused. He, he has had a rough time in his life. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. He spoke simple, plain, and clear. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. <clears throat> when Paul spoke, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit to power. And not of man. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. Listen, we just read last year. Oh, I like this preacher. I like that preacher. I got, you know, that's not what it's about. When I came to you guys, I stood in the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone. It is not me that's speaking. Get your eyes off me. Get your eyes on God, on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's still rebuking them about this, this man worship. And I've seen a few churches where the, for whatever reason the pastor leaves, they follow him. Pastor dies, they don't go to church no more. Pastor quits, they don't go. It's all about the man. Oh, we left this church because these people, then you weren't there for God. You were there because of those people. And you're going to get every church. It's not perfect. But if you can go there for God and say, God, you know, besides this nonsense that you know what's going on, speak to me, Lord. I mean, some people, if they came in here and sat down with me, saw my study area, some of the books I had, they wouldn't like me because of a particular name. Yeah, I'm not after that name. I, I know enough to, to, to weigh what is good from that man and what is bad from that man. But if they come over and see his books over here, oh, then you're following a man. That's wrong. When I come to you guys verse by verse in Genesis to, to 1 Corinthians 9, I've been reading you the Word of God, and I hopefully I've been faithfully to tell you if it's something I believe in, it's not scriptural. I hopefully I've been I've been faithful to tell you, hey, you can believe this or you cannot believe it. But when I read it from the Bible, and when I, I give you the verse and we read and I say, you ought to believe that. And believe me, you're not going to get enticing great words. And I don't know enticing great words. I have trouble saying some of the words that are in the Bible. I wish some of these words were simpler. And there are people out there, and I've, I've, like I said, when I was in the hospital, I was watching some of these television programs. And, all, and man, you just listen to them. It's like they're walking theosis. It's like, you know, I understand what you're saying because I've been through school. The people in the audience don't know what you're saying, and I mean audience. <laughs> Paul went there, keep it simple, stupid. I like that expression. And that's what Paul was doing. Keep it simple. And that you turn not from the wisdom of man, but the power of God. Get off man. There's too much man worship today. 
like I said, check out their websites, check out their emails, check out how are they produced through the world. Is it anything through Jesus Christ or is it by them? That will tell you. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. You gotta read that. Get off man. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Perfection. They're not 100% perfect and sin. No, those who have grown. Those who are trying. Their life is yielding to God with failure. Yeah, not the wisdom of this world. Paul is not using any wisdom of the world. He's not using any of the world. To teach these people about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's not taking something that the world will do to, to, to please their people. Say, hey, I'll bring that. Hey, look at all the crowds they're getting over there with that thing. I'll bring that in the church house. Paul's not doing that. Paul's not taking, hey, it works for the world. It works for the church. He's not doing that right there. See, the world has wisdom. The world knows how to bring crowds. The world knows how to sell their junk. And Paul's not doing that. Nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Listen, you just take the world of Satan. Guess what? It, it's a failure. You can sell that popular soda with every single color demonstration and all the jingles and all the people on the television and the right words on the radio. You can sell that big soda company that everybody knows about and then when heaven and earth have passed away and the God's word are settled forever, what is that? It's gone. It's dead. It's worthless. What did it do for Jesus Christ? Absolutely nothing. But if you were going to a bunch of people say, hell, you're going. You will die. I hope this is the message as I do. And Jesus alone saved. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. With those simple words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Somebody may believe on those words. Somebody may be encouraged by me doing something for Jesus to step up. That will last for all eternity. I can call a band. I can say, hey, you know, they hired a drummer. Maybe if I get a drummer, I'll get more people dancing in front of me. Right? But that's the world system. Maybe if I get me some necklaces and some rings and some Christian tattoos that, you know, that, that come off. And I can have a little table and all that. I can get right in with them the worldly way. And they'll come to my booth and they'll buy the stuff. No. That's the world. God said, verse 18 to 25 in the previous chapter 1, he said, preach the word. That's the only way. If you're not preaching the word, you're not doing what Paul said. Now we got to think today, it's all over. Every church has got a vacation Bible. Really? Really? Or are you just competing with the church that has the vacation Bible down from the street, the church that has the vacation Bible, from that church who had the vacation Bible, who had 500 kids that last year. Now we're going to have 600 kids this year. And they had a great float for theirs. And we're going to have a greatest float for this. And then they had a bouncy house for us. Man, we're going to get a whole horse and pony show for ours. You see how the competition builds up? It got to be better and better than last year. That's worldly wisdom. That's not God. Ever wonder what they do with the money when you pay for those programs? I'm thinking about writing those companies. Find out where those companies are. I want to demand from them what they do with their profits. Don't tempt me. I got an important letter I got to sit down and write pretty soon. Very important letter. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Ooh, ooh. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world Unto our glory, <clears throat> which more <clears throat> my throat, excuse me, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, 
they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they knew what they were doing, you know, guys, if we crucify him, scripture will be fulfilled and there will be victory to the people who believe on him. So the princes knew. The princes of this world knew. 1 Timothy 1.13 But as is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. All right. Jesus Christ was destined to die on that cross. And they were all too happy to do it. Had they known what the scripture said, they would not have done it because they would have realized, no, this guy would be even more troublemaker. But then, with that aspect that Jesus has died on the cross, has been buried, and has risen from the, from the grave, I have not seen Jesus. I have not even heard Jesus in my ears. He told me he's going to prepare a mansion for me. We'll take that illustration there. And it says here, Neither has entered in the heart of man, for with the heart man believes on the righteousness, that heart that I believed on Jesus, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You cannot fathom what God's going to do for you in eternity. Yeah, they're golden streets. How, how, tell me, explain to me how a golden street looks like in purification of no sin and no curse. Tell me. I am, besides meeting the Lord Jesus Christ, I am dying to hear those cherubim worshiping God all the time. Holy, holy, holy. What does that sound like? How is it that an innumerable presence of angels before God? Tell a little child to sit down with his crayons and draw a picture of God on the throne. He, he couldn't. There's no fathom. Because those crayons that he's going to use or she's going to use are cursed from the ground. You couldn't draw God with crayons that are cursed. Tell me what a body's going to feel like when it has no sin and pain and sorrow in it. I don't even know that one. We can't fathom. I don't even know if we're going to know each other in heaven. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. There are some things we know. By the Bible. I know if I were to die before the rapture, from death, absent from the body, present with the Lord, there I am seeing Jesus Christ. I know there's an event coming one day called the rapture. All the Christians are going to go. I know there's, there's a city, I, and I can go over Revelation 20 and 21 and describe that city in 22. I know that. I believe in it. I haven't seen it. I haven't heard it. But God's Holy Spirit says, there it is. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. You ever hear the expression being deep in thought? Well, think about the Holy Spirit gotten you deep into God. Have you just, when there's no... Chaos going around. He would just been sitting in a chair somewhere, driving me. Just wherever you've been. He would just, just think about God for a moment. What it's going to be like. The peace, the love, the long suffering, all of it. Under sinless condition. Jesus didn't even get that on this planet Earth for 33 and a half years. He was sinless perfection, but he had guys fighting behind him all the time. Who's going to be the greatest? Oh, I'll whop his ear off. Oh, Lord, not me. But think about the sinless perfection of Jesus Christ and all of us believers in heaven, sinless perfection as he is, and complete peace and harmony and worshiping who we're supposed to be worshiping, getting our eyes off the flesh and all about God. How wonderful is that going to be? Ever think about that? You ever think about a hymn? 
whatever they say, you know, page number 587, whatever, how they do it, and it'll be the proper right song all the time, every time. And when the word of God is read to it, I make mistakes reading. I mispronounce a word. I skip a, a verse by accident. I skip a word by accident. But when we have the words being read to us, and having, no mistakes at all. No boring illustrations. And you can pinch yourself, pinch the person next to you, and there won't be no pain. You think about that? That's what the Holy Spirit's told me. And this is what you want your lost people, your lost friends, your lost neighbors, your lost family, your lost co This is what they want. This is what you want them to understand. We're talking to a woman today about her daughter. She can't understand. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. What's that? I know that a 9 16th wrench will take off a 9 16th inch uh, bolt on a car engine block. I know if I put a nail against a piece of wood and slam it with a hammer, it will go into that wood and will hold that wood. I know that 12 inches is a foot. That's man's wisdom. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. The people who are lost do not know God because they don't have that spirit. And they don't get that spirit, and they're not going to get enlightened that spirit, but they got to have the word, they got to have belief, and they got to have faith in Jesus Christ and get that Holy Spirit, that comforter. Then they get, well, wow, how come I didn't see it before? Because it comes by faith and belief. No man that does not ever, has not ever believed on Jesus Christ knows anything about God in heaven. You can take the, I've seen the light, and I walked through the light, and throw in a garbage can. Are you saved? Well, I'm not saved. No, throw in a garbage can. It means nothing. You're in on drugs or, or something like that. There is no light in the Bible. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Satan appears as, a, as, a, as an angel of light. When you got a born-again Bible-believing Christian with the Bible who's doing what God wants, oh, you can sit down and talk with him and have a, what do you think? And you two or three or four who are having to get, you may be wrong. Because we don't know what heaven's going to be like to think about. Some people think we're going to have a feast day of eating and drinking and all that. I don't think so. But that's not my opinion because I'm not there yet. But you're saved. You have that spirit of God that man does not have. You have revelations from God that man doesn't. There's the difference. And then when the rapture happens, those that are the spirit will go up. Those that are just men will stay with the man of sin. And this is called intelligence omniscient. That means know it all. One day in glory, we will know it all. And not that of sin. You know what Eve was, was, was put forth by Satan? If you eat that fruit, you'll have the knowledge of good and evil. When we get the glory, we'll have no knowledge of evil at all. That will be removed. Imagine going to a place called New Jerusalem. Where everything you're going to say will never be wrong. You'll never wish that you, oh, I wish I could take that back. I'm sorry I ever said that. That will never happen. Every thought in your life in New Jerusalem will be perfect and right. You will not have to judge your thoughts. You will not have to ever hear judge not least he be judged because it will be all right. That's not now. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Oh, so see, there is a spirit of the world. And what's that one of those spirits of the world today? John says, try the spirit. Aren't we in the spirit of Christmas? Isn't that what they call it? Have you tried that spirit of Christmas? It ain't nothing with Christ. And you'd be a fool to say, put Christ back in Christmas. He was never there. you got to realize there are spirits out there. There's a spirit of God 
And there's the spirit of the world. And if the Antichrist is so close to Jesus Christ that he's an imitation, that spirit of the world could so come close to the spirit of God. Churches are fooled and thinking they're doing something for God, and they're not. In the name of Jesus Christ, of course. But the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So, we can know what God's given us. And still not see it like Abraham. That's our faith. The Bible tells us what we're going to get, what we can get, and what we can lose. The Bible tells us there's five crowns we can earn. Well, four crowns, unless you're a pastor, missionary, evangelist. And those crowns don't cost nothing, but you're sacrificing time, effort, money, love. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. See, get off the man. I'm reading, you read books about the Bible and stuff like that. And they'll be going, hey, that's good. And then they'll throw in all oh, the Greek and the Hebrew. And this man says this and that man says this. And, that, and that, not see, now you're in with the realm of man. Tell man to shut up and let God speak. For things we all speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The Holy Ghost doesn't even reference the world in comparison. Excludes the world. But the natural man, man that comes from a woman, is born of a woman, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Go back to verse uh, 118 to 25. You go to church three times a, a week. You go, and, and you type to it. You sit there and listen to a guy yell at you for 45 minutes. And then you give him money. You spend all your money in that, in that drinky, boozy cocky stuff over there and you ruin your family and you're ruining your body that you're going to need health care and you're yelling at me about giving to God you're giving to the, the, the despisement of your family and your body yes the unsaved man everything about God is foolish God already told you through the Holy Spirit through Paul to the carnal church You're an idiot standing out there preaching. You're so stupid to come knocking on my door with, with, with a, that piece of paper. You're a fool. Thank you. That's what the Bible says. You're so high and lofty. You th oh, I'm so better than that. But then some people go out and paint their faces for, for a football games. Some people get all dressed up, uh, you know, once a year to, to pretend who they're not and go ask for free candy or, you know, all the kinds of junk throughout the year. Celebrating the independence of America. And then you got to pay your tax bill for this. Then you got to pay your, your sales tax for that. Then you got to pay your, your uh, income tax. And then you got to pay that tax. And you got to pay this tax. And you can't build a fence unless you get permission from the government. And you can't do that because of it. And then you get a letter that you got to serve on a jury. But you celebrate freedom of America. You're a fool. There's no freedom in America. Foolishness unto him, the unsaved man. Neither can he know them. Because they, the unsaved, are spiritually discerned. So don't go to a lost man and start, you know, this is Daniel's 70th week. You know, the seven, we're going to make a movie about, you know, the tribulation period. The unsaved man doesn't, he doesn't know anything about that. You can't do this nonsense. You've got to, by Paul and, and what we've read so far, through Genesis to 1 Corinthians, it's got to be the written word first. It's got to be preached or taught. It's got to be heard in ears and received with the heart by faith. Anything else. 
You say, well, how did Noah get all the animals in the ark? That's a distraction from the truth. His flesh saying, hey, hey, I don't want to hear that because <clears throat> I make it convicted. Well, where did Cain get his wife? That's a distraction. Hey, hey, don't go any further because, you know, my conscience may say I am a sinner. But he that is spiritual, watch this. We'll mark this verse down. But he that is spiritual, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, what we've read so far, this chapter, I'm spiritual. Judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Judge not least he be judged. Listen, lady. I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian. I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. I am washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. But he that's spiritual judges, I can judge all things. Don't you come to me and tell me, judge not least you judge. I have the power of God to judge by using this book. When you come to me with Mary, the book says you're wrong. When you come to me with baptism, the book says you're wrong. When the book comes, when you come to me, the book and says church attendance, you're wrong. When the book, when you come to me in the book and and you say atheism, the book says you're wrong. Sit square handed and you know mumma ma and all mumble jumble, come back as a cow. The book says you're wrong. I can judge you by what the book says. And yet he himself, me, is judged of no man. They have no right to judge me because they don't have the spirit that's in me. They don't know anything about God. When they come up to you and say, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. You just admitted you're an idiot. Because, yes, Jesus did that. You just admitted you didn't read your Bible. Because, yes, we read in the Bible, Jesus preached on the street. You just admitted to me that you have no idea what the Holy Spirit is doing because you don't have the Holy Spirit because it's in the Bible, street preaching. So don't come to me saying, well, Jesus never do that. Jesus is up in heaven saying, yes, they would. And he can tell you, Scripture says, what he's doing is correct. Mark 16, Romans chapter 10. I can look at somebody and at their life and their works and what they're doing. I can say, you know what? You're lost. You need to be saved. Now, how they're spending their money and stuff like that, I have no idea. I don't even know how to spend my money. But the context of what we've been talking in the last few chapters 13 and 14. We're talking about a man who's of the world. We're talking about the man that has the spirit. There's two different. There's one that's lost. There's one that is saved. And when I look at you and I see what your life is, I see what the conduct of your life, I can say, hey, you're a Christian. Or hey, I don't think you're a Christian. And I am going to deal with you as us. I'm going to treat you as lost. Or I'm going to teach you as bring you up in Christ for perfection. And when you do what God tells you to do, and you study your Bible, and you're involved in the ministry, some kind, God will give you that insight when you look at that person and say, this is what you got to do for this person. you got to ram hell down his throat because he's not saying, well, you got to ram, come on, now take, now take a little bite of this. All right, chew it. Take a little more bite of this. Chew it. Okay, I think you're ready for this one, and we'll, we'll grant you up till we get you spiritual meat. For who has known the mind of the Lord? That's a, that's a good question. Somebody, who does, somebody who's lost, do you think they're going to know what the mind of God is, what God's thinking? They will tell you what they think God is thinking. That he may instruct him and paul writes this in another place but we have the mind of christ did, did you know that your thoughts in your mind you is the same thing of christ when you lay that that flesh back in the grave and bury it and you are in the spirit you have got the mind of christ And you're going to deal with people as such. You're going to deal with them as loss or you're going to deal with them as salvation. 
You're going to pray for them to be saved, or you're going to pray for them to grow. And that mind of Christ today, you know, we all we don't want people to suffer. We don't want them to have pain. And the hardest thing is to pray to God, say, God, do whatever it takes for that person to get saved. Because I pray that prayer today while they're living and they get saved is so much better than not praying that prayer and have them suffer for all eternity while living a good life now. And I've seen God answer the prayers. I've not seen the person churn, but I've seen God answer the prayer. See, God knows where that person needs to go to get saved. And there's all different kinds of stories. As I, my testimony was today. Why did I get saved? The main number one reason was, hey, I was doing okay. I wasn't in the hospital. I was living for medium-sized paychecks. I just didn't want to go to hell. When that man sat with me and showed me hell, showed me who I was, I knew who I was by the Bible. I acknowledged my sins and asked Christ to save me because I didn't want to go to hell. It didn't have to be in a hospital. And God will bring to those people that are lost, he will bring them to that situation in their life. Where it could be the make, breaking point or the making point. And a lot of times, because we love, and there's nothing wrong with that, we're fearful to ask God to do whatever it takes. And sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes that's the judgment. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the spirit of Christ. We're not to use man's ways, man's words, man's knowledge. We are to use the knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit, the comforter to deal with people. It's all about God and the Holy Spirit. There's no room for the world. And yet that's where we are today. The world. 